हेलो एंड गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग गुड आफ्टरनून वॉट इज अ मार्केट मार्केट इज नॉट अ प्लेस वेर वी गो एंड बाई वेजिटेबल्स या वी डू कॉल इट अ मार्केट मार्केट इज जस्ट नॉट द प्लेस वेर वी गो एंड बाई वेजिटेबल्स इट्स समथिंग दैट वी हैव डिराइव स्टेटिंग दैट दैट्स अ प्लेस वेर वी गेट ऑल आर रेगुलर नीड्स वॉट इज अ मार्केट इन इट्स मार्केट इज अ प्लेस वेर पीपल विथ डिफरेंट ओपिनियन डिफरेंट माइंड सेट डिफरेंट थाट प्रोसेस दे कम टूगेदर एंड दे इंटरक्ट दैट इज अ मार्केट इट कैन बी एनी थिंग इट कैन बी फॉर वेजिटेबल्स वेर पीपल कम विद डिफरेंट ओपिनियन विद डिफरेंट माइंड सेट विद डिफरेंट थाट वेंडर्स वेंडर्स हैव कम इन टू सेल देयर प्रोडक्ट we buyers are going there to buy the product that is a market uh, when different opinionated people they come together and make a transaction or communicate together with a transaction they have a transaction that's where that's where we that's how we define a market now let's see uh, we'll see how people form an opinion and what do they do and how the market starts we'll take an example and we'll dive deep into how the stock market looks like and what is the stock market we'll see all of this in this video stay tuned now in the stock market say there is a company x this company is right in the middle of a very hectic time a time which is say 2008 a huge market crash maybe it's in the middle of the corona crisis 2020 or maybe that company is in the middle of the ukraine russia war 2022 or maybe during any any hard or difficult scenario that company has come down from 100 rupees to 50 rupees that's a 50% loss there was one person who purchased the stock for 100 rupees and now it's worth 50 rupees what will happen it's a 50% loss what should i do should i sell it off should i stay should i run away what should i do so these two traders trader one who had the stock and the stock is now trading at half of its price he purchased it for 100 rupees and now it's worth 50 rupees the stock is trading at 50 rupees he is panicked he wants to sell it off he thinks the company is finished the company doesn't have a prospect anymore it's not going to come back so let's book 50 rupee loss and sell it off at least he'll get back his 50 rupees there is another trader there is another person who has a different opinion he says wow this is an opportunity this is the time to buy that particular share that particular company is now available at 50% of its price it's it's available at a 50% discount that's a huge discount i'm going to buy it so he takes a decision to buy the first seller the first trader takes a decision to sell this person takes a decision to buy now what happens it's up to the stock market it's up to the exchange to bring these two people together and help them fulfill their transaction successfully that's all up to the stock exchange now what and how this happens we'll see right here in the excel sheet so now let's see uh it's 11 am on a trading day and that one particular share is trading at 1000 rupees now there is one person who wants to sell the share at 1002 rupees okay now let's imagine he he wants to sell he he might have bought the share for maybe 1500 or 2000 rupees it's at a loss it's it's it has come down he wants to sell sell off the share at 1002 rupees currently the share is trading at 1000 rupees he places an order of 1002 he places a sell order of 1002 Now with the sell order there is a buyer who is waiting he is waiting to buy this company share at any price or maybe at a price that is offered to him 
he sees that there is a seller available at 1002 he wants 1002 rupees for that particular share this buy this buyer says okay fine i am ready to pay 1002 rupees give it to me now this trade gets executed this seller who has put in a sell value of 1002 rupees finds a yes from this buyer and this buyer who says yes makes a payment of 1002 rupees this 1002 goes to the seller and this share comes to this buyer and now what happens to the share the share last trading price was 1000 rupees and now since there was a trade that has happened at 1002 rupees the last trade value is now 1002 rupees similarly it will keep on showing the last traded value as 1002 rupees until the next trade happens say at 1101 it's still showing that the last trading price ltp is 1002 rupees at this point again there is another seller who wants to sell it off who wants to sell his shares at 1006 rupees okay with a you know but there is another buyer who says okay fine i'm ready to give 1006 rupees for this share so again this seller finds a buyer who says yes money or 1006 rupees from this buyer goes to this person and this share comes to this person and the last trading buy, the last trading price is now modified to 1006 rupees similarly this value will continue to show until the next trade happens which is again 1011 rupees someone wants to sell it off and someone who says okay fine i'm going to buy it at 1011 rupees similarly the value changes to 1011 and again to 1016 so this is how the share trading value keeps changing in a day and over a period of time so when you see the share market graph it moves up down up down up down these are the values that you see these are the values that are calculated these are the values that gets calibrated on that graph first value 1002 second 1006 1011 1016 and when you plot all these numbers against these time frame you get the intraday graph so the trading time starts at 9 15 a.m indian time so at that point of time so probably the share was at 950 rupees so from 950 960 980 1000 it reached 1000 at 11 a.m and then at 11 1 it's 1006 at 11 2 it's 1011 at 11.5 it's 1016 it might fall back again to maybe 1010 whatever it is and however it moves that's how the entire direction is calculated in the stock graph so how does the uh, so how does the stock get traded so you are the person who wants to buy say suppose 100 shares of a particular company which is uh, trading at 1000 rupees each so that's 1 lakh rupee that you want to invest 100 shares at 1000 rupee each you are going to invest 1 lakh rupee into that share you log into your broker account you place an order to buy 100 shares for 1000 rupee each you place in the money you place the buy order you hit the buy order and now it's up to the broker to take it further now your broker he checks your fund balance the balance balance that you have in your account he sees that okay fine you have the money to make this purchase and then he forwards your request request to the stock exchange now what does the stock exchange do at this point of time the stock exchange who gets your order from say your broker and he he sees okay fine this person wants 100 shares of this particular company company x the stock exchange will now try and find out a seller who wants to sell 100 shares of this particular company now it can be one particular uh, it can be one seller it can be two sellers it can be 100 sellers who wants to sell one share each so anyway uh, 
the stock the work of the stock exchange is to find out those hundred shares uh, those people who are trying to sell 100 shares of this particular company so that the stock market the stock exchange can accumulate those sell orders and bring it in front of this buy order and match it so this is the work of the stock exchange so once they find it they find 100 shares available for sale they have an order from you to buy 100 shares they bring together they match it the trade is executed now so these 100 shares will now be electronically deducted from their demat account and will move into your demat account so now you are the owner of these 100 shares it's all up to you you want to keep it you want to sell it off whatever you want to do you can do with it you can sell it off immediately as soon as you buy it you can if you find it's it's profitable if the share price has moved up and uh, you want to sell them off you place a sell order again the same thing is going to happen it will go to the stock exchange the stock exchange will see there is a hundred sell order from you and he will try and find out people who wants to buy 100 shares of that particular company and likewise these shares will then again move from you to those people you can keep it for one day you can keep it for a month you can keep it for 15 days you can keep it for a year 10 year 5 years 10 years 20 years or you can keep it for the lifetime it's all up to you the shares are with you it's your choice as long as the company stays you can stay with the company you can stay with the company forever now when when uh, now when we discussed this you know remember we saw uh, we placed an order and immediately uh, we we placed a buy order and immediately we wanted to sell it off then again there are options wherein where you can keep that share for a day two days three days months or maybe forever so when people think of a particular share in these different terms they they keep the share with them for very long or maybe they immediately sell it off how, how do we differentiate these these kind of people now there are terms to differentiate these traders we'll we'll see all of them so the first type is a day trader remember we said as soon as you buy those 100 shares you can sell it off you can sell it off immediately so as soon as you sell all those shares immediately you are termed as a day trader you are buying those shares and selling it off on that very same day so you're a day trader so a day trader uh, you can buy it in the morning maybe at around 9 30 or 10 o'clock and maybe you can sell it off at 11 12 or maybe one o'clock two o'clock or maybe at 3 30 when the market closes just before the market closes so that's uh, how a day trader works he buys and sells on the very same day now what is a scalper a scalper is someone who who trades on a huge amount of shares but trades on a very small profitable margin so maybe for you as a day trader if you buy a share for a 1000 rupee you probably uh, you know you would want that share to go up by maybe 5 rupees or 3 rupees or 4 rupees you buy you have bought 100 shares so a profit of 3 rupees or 4 rupees would give you a profit of 300 or 400 rupees on that share on that trade so that's your lookout you're looking out for a 1 or 2 rupee profit so that on a 100 share uh, on on those 100 shares you can make those 100 200 300 rupees profit on that particular day that's how a day trader works a scalper things otherwise they take big bets like like thousands and thousands of shares when the number of shares when the number of shares is big the profit margin is small that's how a scalper looks like you know for like 10 paisa 20 paisa profit margin on a 1 lakh share so that gives 1000 rupee profit right so that's how the, that's how a scalper works they buy 1 lakh shares and they sell it off just as soon as the stock moves up by a fraction amount maybe 10 paisa 15 paisa 20 paisa 50 paisa okay you know they they work on very small profit margins okay but they work they play in big volumes to earn that money swing trader a swing trader is someone who buys a stock keeps it with him till he sees there is a profit and then sells it off he keeps it maybe for a week 10 days two weeks 
थ्री डेज फोर डेज फाइव डेज वट एवर इज टाइम फ्रेम हिज लॉजिक इज आई हैव बॉट इट आई विल फाइंड अ प्रॉफिट एंड आई सेट इट ऑफ दैट्स यू नो वी वी टर्म दीज काइंड ऑफ पीपल एज अ स्विंग ट्रेडर एंड देन वी हैव एन इन्वेस्टर एन इन्वेस्टर इज सम वन हु बेट्स ऑन अ कंपनीज फ्यूचर ही बेट्स दैट द कंपनी इज गोइंग टू डू बिग ही बाइज एंड बाइज एंड कीप्स इट फॉर एवर और मे बी फॉर अ वेरी वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम फाइव ईयर्स टेन ईयर्स ट्वेंटी ईयर्स और मे बी फॉर एवर वॉरन बॉफेट इज एन इन्वेस्टर वी ऑल नो सो दीज आर द टाइप्स ऑफ ट्रेडर्स एंड इन्वेस्टर्स दैट वी फाइंड इन द स्टॉक मार्केट नो अगेन इफ वी टॉक अबाउट इन्वेस्टिंग देर आर टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स based on the investment strategy they apply into the market so these two types of investors are mainly segregated into two types one is value investing and the other is growth investing so value investing is something where people look for a value in a stock for uh, you know they look for undervalued stocks and then they buy it the other way of investing is growth investing stocks that are in the growth phase that are ready to move up investors who buy these kind of stocks are actually termed as growth investors and uh, lastly i would like to uh, just touch base upon uh, the few returns that the stock market gives and how we term them so the returns are the annual yields that the company gives uh, of 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 your investments so uh, the uh, they can be calculated or they can be segregated between three types one is the absolute return which is the selling price minus the buying price and that's the profit so that gives you the absolute return so a, a, or maybe if, even if you don't sell it even if it's the value that you have uh, at the end of the year and how much you have invested at the beginning so if you have invested 100 rupees and it's now at 120 rupees so you have an absolute return of 20% then we have a cagr return so when you keep an investment for a very very long term maybe 5 years 10 years and some years the investment gives you a negative return some year it gives a positive return some year it gives a huge return maybe double or triple uh, your investments and then again the very next year it falls by 50% so there is a fluctuation in the market and accordingly there is a fluctuation in your investments so how do you uh, how do you normalize these fluctuations and bring down one particular figure that that can tell you how much your investments have given you that is what we call as the chgr and then we have an xirr returns the xirr returns are calculated on investments that are irregular so maybe you have invested or so maybe you are investing in the stock market on a regular basis every month so when the investment amounts are irregular when when you are investing small chunks or maybe all of a sudden a big chunk of money and then then some months you don't invest and then some months you invest and then you withdraw a little bit of money in between and then you put in some more money so these kind of irregular investments irregular withdrawals they also give a return at the end so if you keep on doing all these things and then at the end of 10 15 20 years you would probably get a return out of your investments how do you calculate all these how do you calculate these returns when the investment is so haphazard so irregular we have the formula as the xirr returns we'll get through the xirr and the cagr returns later on in details uh, the video is big now so we'll have to close so this is how the market works this is how a trader works in the market this is how an investor works in the market and and we'll see about the stock market in details and we'll try and understand how a trader or an investor can profit from this market so do keep an eye and keep an eye on this uh, series do watch the entire series on the stock market we'll drill deep into investing we'll treat drill deep into technical analysis fundamental analysis and all everything that you should be knowing to play in the stock market and come out profitable till then sc signing off goodbye